Hey guys, this is Brendan with Gone Mobile Vans. We're here above Big Bear Lake in California. We're running some trails in a Transit and a Sprinter. We're gonna go through some pros and cons of both. Have a little fun today. Let's get right into it. All right guys, first up in this comparison is powertrain. So the 2023 and after Sprinters have a four cylinder, two liter turbo. Overall, it's a pretty good motor, makes some pretty decent torque decent gas mileage. The one area that you might find some deficiencies is heading up hills. It can lack a little bit in the horsepower range. Heading up the hill here, we've got uh, my friend Griffin's van and my Transit, and he was basically pedaled to the metal, struggling a little bit up the hills, whereas I was a little bit more like half into the gas pedal. So um, great motor overall, but could use a little bit more heading up hills. And on the Transit powertrain, we've got a V6. This is the EcoBoost engine. It's got a 300 plus horsepower, 400 plus pound feet of torque. It's really quite a beast actually. So heading up these hills up into Big Bear, no problem heading up the hills. I had plenty of gas left to go if I needed to pass. Probably not as good as gas mileage as the Sprinter, but overall a really solid motor. One other area of difference is towing capacity. The Transit really has got the Sprinter beat in that regard. I used to tow my travel trailer up the Cajon Pass over the Grapevine, no problem doing 65, heaping up in traffic with a fully loaded van and trailer. So with the Sprinter, it is a diesel motor. So you're gonna have to make sure you have access to diesel fuel. Some places may have some issues with that if you're down in Mexico or other remote areas. So you gotta make sure you might need to plan your trip ahead of time, make sure that you're not gonna have any issues with that. You also have to add some def fluid every three to 5,000 miles to make sure you keep up on all the emissions and stuff like that that's required for diesel engines. On the Transit, it's a gas motor. You can use any of the gas levels. I typically put in 91 octane, works great. You don't have to worry about def and typically finding gas at any gas station is not a problem. So now I'm gonna show you guys some of the differences on the inside. Both of these vans have our finished floors and finished ceilings in them. So you'll really be able to see the difference between the height between the Transit and the Sprinter. Let's go check it out. All right guys, so here we are in a Sprinter. This has got our regular stock three quarter inch subfloor and basically the same thickness ceiling panels in this van. So I'm about 6'3 today in my shoes. I'm feeling pretty good standing up straight. I can't stand up fully straight without hitting my head on the, on the roof of the van. One benefit for the Sprinter though, is that it's the same height all the way forward to the headliner. The Transit tapers off quite a bit right here at the front, but otherwise, you know, you gotta keep that in mind when you're building your van, are you 6'2 or so? You may not be able to stand up fully in the Sprinter. All right, so here we are in my Transit. So this is same thing, stock subfloor, stock finished ceiling panels, 6'3". I've got plenty of room in this van. So once again, I've got two and a half, three inches worth of headroom in this van. This is what I was talking about in the transit. It does taper forward. So at, at here I can hit my head, but once you're in the main part of the van, I got plenty of space. You could be six, five and still have room in here. All right. So next up in the comparison is off-road capability and ground clearance. Now, really the Sprinter has this beat. You got way more ground clearance capable on the Sprinter than you do on the transit. You also have larger tires that you can fit on the Sprinter. So that gives you more ground clearance in addition to what the lift can already provide. So the, one of the main differences though is the differentials on these vans. So the Sprinter all wheel drive has an open rear differential. So you're gonna have some trouble. You gotta have electronic braking to keep tires from spinning. Whereas the Transit has a uh, limited slip differential. So right out of the get go, it is a little bit more capable in that regards, better traction control. The adjustable drive modes on the Transit are also quite handy. Mud and ruts are great for slippery, loose sand conditions, mud, things like that. There's also an eco mode if you wanna be light on the gas pedal. But really, you know, Sprinter has a beat bigger tires, better ground clearance. The Transit got some better traction in this regard. We try to build a Transit as about as big as you can get. 265, 75 tires. We've got two inch lift kit on there. We've re adjusted the shock brackets, things like that to really get as much ground clearance as possible. So really at the end of the day, both of these vans are super capable. We're out here, these trails are not Jeep trails. We wouldn't recommend Jeep trails and vans. So anyways, we think they're super capable. Get your family out here, have some fun on these forest trails, find yourself a dispersed camping site. Super capable, lots of fun. So as far as aftermarket parts, things like that, the Sprinter really has the market covered in that regard. Tons of builders, tons of companies been making parts for a long time for the Sprinter. The Transit is coming along really nicely. What we've been super excited about recently is all of the aftermarket companies making parts for the Transit. A lot of interest since the Transit Trail and these things are super capable. More and more companies are making great products and you really can't go wrong with either platform. So last little comparison is, 
parts and service, things like that. So there are four dealerships all over the place, several thousand in the US. So you, wherever you go, you can probably find a dealership that can manage some repairs or maintenance on your transit. Sprinters, not as many dealerships across the country. And even some Mercedes dealerships don't service the Sprinter because they're not, they don't have a high F bay for that, things like that. So something else to consider. But overall, if you're in a major metropolitan area, those problems aren't gonna be an issue. All right, guys, that's it for this comparison tour of our transit and our sprinter these things are both fantastic we're having a lot of fun out here today up in the mountains hitting some trails having some fun gonna camp out here tonight if you like this kind of content please consider subscribing if you have some other things that you'd like to see regarding the transit or the sprinter let us know we'd be happy to shoot a video for that hope to see you on the next one